Hello, everyone. Holy mackerel. There's so many people here already. <laughs> I want to thank Barbara Rowe. She's already donated, uh, made a donation to uh, my charity today. Thank you very much. And Joanna Karen, thank you so much. So anyone, everyone, welcome to my Christmas ornament 2020 live stream. Uh, this is going to be recorded directly to YouTube. This is going to be a little bit different from my normal uh, Facebook lives in that this is not going to be edited at all. This is just going to go, if you are not here for this, it will be available to be watched afterwards in an unedited form. Uh, so for those that want to fast forward, I am going to be having uh, cards for each step that we are, that we're doing. So you can just fast forward through the recording till you get to the next step and you'll be able to see, uh, just get to the instructions without all our chit chat. Um, I really wanted to do this because this fall has not been the fall that it normally is. It's usually a wonderful time of year, but with all the uh, pandemic issues about, um, we're all just so isolated. We're isolated from our family, we're isolated from our friends, we're isolated from our regular traditions. And if I'm feeling this way, I am sure there's so many of you feeling that way too. So I thought this was one way we could all come together and do something together. Um, this is a Christmas ornament that uh, one of my Stitch in Chat sisters, Barbara Bayless, showed me last year um, in a family uh, in a group that we were, and I loved it. And I know it's out there; you might have already done it, but if you haven't, this is a wonderful, wonderful little ornament. So, uh, Mary Ann Reynolds, thank you so much. Um, what's also different from this from my regular. Uh, live streams is there is a thing called super chat and uh, there's a dollar value associated with it. And tonight um, any donations are going to go to the North York general foundation. And that is the hospital where my son received his chemotherapy this year. I am so uh, thankful for all the staff and all the healthcare workers there um, working in such a hard time, still giving, incredible care. Um, so that's where any of the uh, super chats will go. Thank you so much. Uh, you're just coming from all over the world. I'm just going to, like I see uh, New York, I see Western Kentucky. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. Uh, New England, Ireland. Oh my Lord, you're up late. So I'm just going to start with the first step. So I'm going to do each step. We're going to take, take um, several minutes to get through. If you have any questions, I am happy to answer them and just put them in the chat. In the background, I have Brandy with me tonight. Brandy is my uh, online, as my assistant. She lives in another province and uh, she is just going to be keeping track of any questions. So I tr I'll try not to miss any. So step number one, step number one, let me just throw this up here. If you haven't already done it, you need to download the supply list and the template. These are, um, you can find them in community. Uh, I think Brandy is going to put it in the chat if it hasn't been there already. Elizabeth Mahal, thank you so much for your donation. Uh, and just download those. Okay, and step number two in the supply list, one of the things that you need is a nine inch square of fabric. This is step number two, a nine inch square of fabric and a nine inch piece of interfacing. Now I have actually picked up a couple of pieces of fabric that have so much starch in them that you could probably get away without using starch without using the interfacing. Uh, like, I mean, this is like paper. It just has so much in it. Uh, so if you have some of those, you may be able to get, get away without the interfacing. Um, Mario D, thank you very much for the donation. So 
What you're going to do, this is supposed to be iron-on interfacing. You might be like me and go to your stash and find out you have no iron-on in <laughs> interfacing. Uh, so you can easily add this on with a glue stick. So I'm just gonna turn this down here. So just take a glue stick, if you haven't ironed it on already, and This doesn't need to be perfect. And just put this on over top. Okay. And that's all you need to do here. So, um, <laughs> M53 Goldsmith and Ludmilla, Ludmilla Jandra. Thank you very much for your donation. So this is what it's going to look like. You just want to get those two pieces together. So you can iron them on, you can stick them on this way, whichever. The one thing you do want to notice is if you have some directional fabrics. I recommend you all consider this is just a practice piece, but if you worry about those things, some things have a direction to them. So what you want is just to note, like this one has a direction to it. So you just want to note that on your piece. I want you to take, let's just go here. Oh. <sighs> Debbie Beaner, Cindy, thank you so much for your donation. Rachel Shapiro, thank you so much for your donation. <laughs> and Corrine, <laughs> thank you. And I see Debbie, look at that. You are amazing. I love your little thing. Thank you so much. That makes me feel wonderful. <laughs> uh, step number three. Step number three. We are going to take your template piece and we are going to take our paper scissors and we are going to cut this template out. Now, you do not need to worry about getting it perfect. You can cut this out with a rotary cutter if you want and a ruler, but using your scissors is just fine. Um, if you're going to cut, just decide whether you're cutting on the inside of the line or the outside of the line. Just try to be consistent. But if you're out by a millimeter or two, it really is not going to be a big deal for this project. Okay. And just mark the top of this ornament is going to be at the point and just mark the bottom. So if you do have directional fabrics, you want to, um, have it oriented properly on your square. Okay. Look at these. Oh, <laughs> that quilt in the background looks so cozy. Thank you so much. I'm not sure if you recognize this, but this is my quilt from my layer cake, my no fail layer cake method. Uh, that's my stash buster number six. And these blocks, um, I just kind of made them up as I went along. The fabric has a, a, a story attached to it. My cousin, my cousin Leslie, she is an amazing woman, an amazing quilter, an amazing gatherer of people. And when I first started quilting, she was already an established quilter. And we went shopping one day and she bought me this fabric. And we did a workshop together, but I did not like the pattern that we were making. It was one of those ones where you sew around the outside and you turn it into a half square triangle. And that's a half square triangle where everything is on the bias. And I just didn't like it. Like we were, I think we were doing a disappearing hourglass or something like that. And everything was on the bias. And I did not like that I was cutting up this beautiful Santa Claus. I'm not sure if you can see it there. It's a letter. The, the fabric line is called postcards for the holidays or something. Um, and I just didn't want to cut that up. Like that, that was to me the, the best part of the fabric. So um, I think I made two blocks and I, I think I even cut them wrong. So 
last year when I did my video on how to organize your UFOs, I realized I was never going to make that quilt. And I took the stuff and I put it back in my stash. And when it came time, like I worked many months trying to figure out a pattern, a, a, a stash buster pattern for a layer cake that would work for all layer cakes. And then uh, when I did that video, I did it. So I was just really happy to finally put the binding on it. And it's not especially well pieced, but as I <laughs> said before, almost everything's forgiven once you put the binding on. So <laughs> thanks for asking about that. Uh, Donnell Stevens, thank you very much. And Melanie, <laughs> number one fan, thank you so much. Okay, so I hope you're, everybody is with me. So you now have a square, you now have your fabric square and you now have a template. Now what we are going to do, um, here we go. Now we are going to take our template and we are just going to mark it out on our fabric. So just take um, Sharpie, something, sh doesn't matter if it's a Sharpie, but just mark your hexagon. Out on your fabric. Whoops, I should have held up the sign. This is step number four. <laughs> and it's like that. So this is one of those things where everything you've learned in kindergarten applies. <laughs> C. Matthews, thank you very much. Penny Greenslade, Thank you very much. And Amy Flein Fleinekin and Liz Johnson, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for showing up. Somebody from Clovis, uh, California, Snodling Kent, thank you so much, Angela. Um, people from Holland, Randolph, New York, how is everybody doing? Everybody with me so far? I know what we're doing so far isn't very tricky. I should pull down one of these just to show you. This is eventually what we are making. So this is a fairly large one. I went, I, this is almost Pretty sure this is almost the size of a fat quarter I started with. And then just before we started, I was talking with Brandy and as we were talking, getting everything set up, I made this itsy bitsy tiny one. I'll throw it against the blue here just to show it a little bit. Just so cute, so tiny. And I think this is a I started with a three inch hexi on this one. Let's see if anybody has any questions. Does anybody have any questions about how to make the California, London, Michigan, Georgia? Oh, somebody from the United Arab Emirates. <laughs> That's a long way away. <laughs> from Wisconsin, Calgary, Newmarket. Anyways, um, so step number five, let's go on. So we have step number five. And as you can imagine, here's step number five. This is the top, this is the bottom. And this is where we cut it out. So I've shown this before. So we're looking, we're aiming for this. Okay. Now, if you were like me in a couple of, a uh, couple of my samples, and if you've cut out this hexagon already, and then you cut out a hexagon of interfacing and put it on top, just go along and trim up the interfacing so that the interfacing is um, the interfacing, there's no interfacing hanging off. 
So you don't want an edge like that. When you trim it, you want it nice and even. Um, Liz Johnson, thank you very much. Can we rotary cut instead? Of course, definitely you can use your rotary cutter instead. Um, if you have a hexi ruler, you can use a hexagon ruler instead. Um, and any template, any, te any size of hexagon will work. Uh, let me just... I went down to the, this, this one I made with a four, I made this, this was originally from the four and a half inch size that went down to here. Um, so I, I wouldn't go much smaller than that. I think maybe a, a three inch might work, but I think this two and a half inch is going to be pretty impossible, but you know, I'm going to probably accept that challenge and try it later. And a cast drop, thank you very much. Sandy, yes, you can donate directly to the North York General Foundation. No problem. Kathleen East, thank you very much. And Susan C, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for keeping us sane this year. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It has been a wild year for all of us. Any more questions on this right here? Are the steps listed on the printout? They're not listed on the on the handout, but um, tomorrow I will um, get a blog up on my website um, with the actual step-by-step -step instructions. So there's a couple of trickier um, maneuvers up ahead that's gonna be very hard to, desc to describe within the instructions. So you'll probably want to um, also watch this video. Hi, Pearl. Thank you. Thank you for stopping in and saying hello and hugs. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, Susan C. Deborah, Deborah Mares, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Now, my next step, I have actually made a larger sample. <laughs> I have made a larger sample. This is step number six. And what we are going to, um, the next step is we have to take our, where is it? Do I have it on this one? So let me take this out here. Okay, so I have made a giant hexagon so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, you might notice that on this one, my interfacing isn't perfect, and that's fine. Um, if that you're in the same spot, you may even have to piece your interfacing together. That's okay as well. You're just trying to give your um, fabric just a little bit more structure. This is based on an origami shape, and um, <laughs> this actually works better than paper, but it still just needs a little bit more rigidity. So um, what we need to do is we need to mark the center points of each piece, and that's very easily done. You just fold it in half, put with a point at the top, you fold it in half, and then mark those two points on the side. And then you just turn it around, do the next point, mark these two points, open it up, and then, whoops, and then do the next point. And mark these two points. So you should have, should do that three times. And just remember that we're going from, we're marking this, this point is at the front, and we're marking the sides. The other thing you need to mark is the center. Opal Hibben, thank you very much for your donation. Opal is actually my favorite gemstone. Just love it. Thank you so much, Opal. And Roxy too, 
thank you so much. So I'm wondering, what did everybody bring to uh, drink? <laughs> I have a cup of a rose hip tea. My mother dropped off some Christmas cookies yesterday in a socially distant drop off. Uh, normally, that's one of our things of the season. We get together and we make Christmas cookies together. Um, we've done it all over the place. We do it. We've done it um, in apartments. We've done it in condos. We've done it at uh, their place outside the city. And in the past, it's been a weekend affair. And as my kids, unfortunately, got older, it got shortened down to a day. And now my kids are very much involved in it. Now my, um, now my children are, uh, when we get together, everybody is involved in making their favorite two recipes. My mother and I making six, we all make two. Um, my youngest son, Imran, uh, he's one of the best cooks <laughs> of all of us. And he's just right in there. So he made some for us and my mother made some. But unfortunately, we did not have our family gathering. And it's so that's just one of those hurts that go along with this social isolation. Margaret Ellis, if I haven't said thank you yet, thank you very much. Okay, anybody have any questions here about this one? Oh, specialty coffee with Brandy, Tia, and Maria. Oh, sounds lovely. <laughs> oh, I see that somebody's had a difficulty with their lightweight interfacing not sticking. I'm sure that this batch of, I bought this and I read the instructions and this interfacing was supposed to be um, fusible, but... Every time I touch it with my iron, it just shrivels into nothing. So a glue stick will, will do a good job. <laughs> Caroline Pecker, thank you so much. In training to be quilter. There's no such thing as in training. You are a quilter. We just move along. We're all working on our black belt in quilting. Can we make these to sell for charity, please? Oh, yes, definitely. This is not my design. Um, I have no copyright. And every pattern I put up is there for you to copy and share and get out there. So if you want to use one of my Stash Buster quilts for a charity, um, um, one of your snuggle programs or your cuddle quilt programs, go for it. Yeah, they're not uh, copy, share. I don't have any problems with that. Just if you could give me credit for it, that, that would be great, but don't even worry about that. Karen Check, thank you so much. Ginger tea with honey and almond milk. Amy C, that sounds lovely. Can you use starch instead of interfacing? I think that would be fine for um, one of the sizes like this, like the size that I provided. Uh, you know, anything from six to eight inch, I'm pretty sure that just a good soaking with starch is going to be fine. Uh, this one, not so much. Uh, this one, I think you want something sturdier uh, just because it's so large. And this one, I actually did a modification and I'm going to talk about it when we're done. Okay. Andrea, hello from Illinois, working on last minute gifts sewing procrastinator. <laughs> I've never done that ever, ever. <laughs> Did I make my husband and I, we gave each of our children a sweatshirt with a crest on it. And yesterday we were busy ironing, designing, pressing, cutting, trimming, packaging, wrapping. <laughs> it's just the job of a parent to do everything last minute. Vicki Fallon, thank you very much. So let's, the next step. Okay, so we are up to step number seven. Okay. So step number seven. So you're going to take your needle and thread. And this is about a foot, long, uh, two feet long, folded in half. And I have put a quilter's knot in the end. And you're just going to go to that center point and go down and go right back up.
And then you are going to take one of these center points, tack it from the underside, go through, and you're going to pull it into the center. Okay, and then you're going to go down. So you're going to turn it towards you. You're going to go down and come back up. Okay, so let me just show you that again. So I went down, I came up, I went through the lower part of the fabric, came up. I'm just lining up, up on that dot and then I'm going down and I'm coming back up. And then you're going to go to the next one. So this one is right beside. And you're going to go down. You're going to pull it to that middle dot. You're going to turn it. And then you're going to go down and come back up. So the marks, uh, M53 Goldsmith, the marks need to be at the center point of each side and then the one in the middle. That's right. So these are the halfway points and then one in the middle. And you're just going to repeat that as you go along. Pull that up. Bring it to line it up with that middle dot. And how far away from the center am I? I'm going in two or three millimeters. And for those in the US, that's probably like an eighth of an inch. And I'm going back down and coming back up. Okay. And you're just going to go around to all six points. And when you're done, you're going to have something that looks like this. And keep that thread attached at the back. You're not going to take that thread off. I've got a piece of interfacing here I need to trim off here. Okay. Are you going down and back up through only the center? Yes, so I'm using the center dot and I'm going through one side and coming back up through the other side. So I'm making a stitch length probably about two to two millimeters wide, um, an eighth of an inch or sorry, a, a sixteenth of an inch. So on the back, you see? No, you can't see on that one. So on the back, it kind of looks like that as I've gone back up and down. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, Mary Ann, my thoughts are with you. Take care. Oh boy, I'm missing some people. Okay, where did I? Uh, okay, okay. And Andrea Luzinski, thank you very much for your donation. Uh, Vicki Fallon, Cindy Strickland, Cheryl Patterson, Patricia Kelly, Amanda Harvey, thank you all very much. So as you've gone down and up through them several times, I'm just going to do the next one. So just going down and back up and grabbing. Okay. So as you finish, you're going to get another hexagon. So this is now making another hexagon shape. So just take a minute as you're done, just to go and 
just pull these up so that the point is in the air and you have a nice crisp corner here. You can use your finger to go along and just make these and pull that up. And if you're like me and you have a little bit of interfacing showing, you can trim that off. I'm not looking for perfection, you know, it's okay. You know, this is, there's the edge right there. I mean, that's, that's gonna be fine. It's just if you have any big pieces, like I've got a little bit chunky here and I may, I may trim that off. So just go through them. Sometimes they get tucked underneath here and you just need to pull it out just a little bit more. So it's standing up. And we are going into the next step. Oh, there's my number eight. So the next step is number eight. Number eight. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to take one. So here is, let's do one that I don't need to trim off. Here, <laughs> we'll do this one. So what you want to do, this is where the, if you're going to mess up, this is going to be the, the step where you're messing up. So I'll just go slow. So you're just pressing this down into a diamond shape. So it's standing up, the corner is right there and you're pressing that into the center. Okay, and you're pressing, just making these kind of uh, nice and crisp on the side. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pull this up. Okay, and you are pressing those two edges, pressing those two edges into the center line and then pulling this down. And this is where you might want to get your stiletto involved. If your fabric isn't behaving nicely or you just need to turn it in just a little bit more. So right here, you may want to use your stiletto to just help roll those edges in. You want to, again, finger press them down and then pull this down to the middle. And then you've got the needle that was still attached to the back. And we are going to come up through the middle and just catch that point of that diamond and then go back down. Okay. Now I know this is the, the part, I, I actually normally do it twice. depending on the size. And I'm just gonna do that again because I know I probably have lost a couple of you there. So here we go again. So we're holding it up straight. The point is up at the top here. And we are going to push that all down till the point is in the center. And we're just going to finger press those edges. And then after that's finger pressed, we're going to pull that tip back up and we are going to roll for those edges, these edges on the side, we're just gonna roll those so those edges align in the center of the piece. And you might need to use your stiletto to help roll things over, like right at the very tip is usually where it's most challenging. Let me just, can you see how that looks? And then we push that down.
and then you just take your needle and thread and come up through the center and back down. And as I say, I like to do it twice. Now, after you tack it down, you may still want to do an adjustment to your leaf. You may find that it just rolled over just a little, and that's where you bring in your stiletto as well. Now, don't worry if there's a little bit of white in the middle, your interfacing or the underside of your fabric showing through right at the center, because we're going to cover that. Okay. And I'll do another one because I'm sure <laughs> this is just one of those things. Uh, when you tack the last one, do you take the stitch, then push the needle to the back? Yes. Can you use glue base to hold the points down? Not really, because there's a lot of manipulation that you're doing to this right now. And, you know, pulling up and pulling down, the glue is just not going to be tacky enough right at the moment to keep it in place. And that's why you need a, um, a needle and thread. So, again... Just pull it up so that the point is at the top. Get this nice and crisp down here. So you have a nice sharp corner on your hexagon at the top. You're going to take that point, put it to the middle. Finger press. Then take that point, pull it up and just press those to the center. It definitely, your, <laughs> your sixth one will definitely be much easier to do than your first one. Once you know what you're doing, it is very, very fluid. And that's how that's done. I'll bring this up through the bottom. Is this regular cotton fabric? Yes, this is regular cotton fabric and this is quilting fabric. But you could use other fabrics. Debbie Button, uh, sorry, <laughs> Debbie Batten. That's my bad old eyes here. Thank you so much for your donation. Okay. I love this because it looks very poinsettia-y um, in red. So I'm doing that again. Point up at the top. So this is one of those ones where I might take off that interfacing just so I don't have to deal with the extra fabric. If this was fusible, I probably wouldn't have it, but because I had to glue it on, there's just a little bit more play between the interfacing and the fabric. So then I put that point, whoops. Put the point to the center. Finger press along the sides. Pull it back. And tack it down. Yes, dip, um, M553 Goldsmith, doing this in red and then slightly gilding the edges. Yes. I think there's all sorts of wonderful things that you could do this, do with this to embellish it. And th then I am on my last one here. Oh, no, I've got two more here. Two more here. So you see, I'm getting a lot, a lot of interfacing just showing off the edges here. So I'm going to just trim that off just so I don't have the extra. Tiffany Ragan, thank you so much. <laughs> I love your little guy flying away. <laughs> Joining late. We'll have to watch the beginning tomorrow. No problem. No problem.
So have any of you done this before? Have any of you done this one? Thank you, Tiffany, for the love. Appreciate it. And this is my last one. So down. So it's, this is a, a cri not critical, but it really helps to, to try and get this nice and smooth and pointy before you start. Okay, pull it up, this is the last one, and tucking it in. Okay, so when you have all six points done, you probably will want to go back in with your stiletto and maybe sharpen up a couple of your corners. Uh, this is all just finger pressed. It's not, you don't need to iron it, but like this one's just a little bit soft, this corner right here. So I'm just gonna go in here with my fingers and try and make that point a little bit sharper. Um, I was pretty good with these ones. And then as it's lying flat here, you may find that some of them just don't lie as flat as you'd like um, or as symmetrical as you'd like. And you just need to go in with your stiletto and just tuck in the fabric if you want to. Um, I've got a point right here where I just have some interfacing that I just wanna tuck underneath. And you can just go back in and fix them up. But it's very forgiving. Um, they don't need to be perfect. What do you think? It does look like a po poinsettia, doesn't it? And let's go here. So, so we have uh, two more steps here. So the last thing is to go into your button basket and find a button to go in the middle. And this is going to hide any of these mistakes or just exposed under fabrics here. So as you can see, that will cover that, but you could even go even smaller. Um, even, well, that's just a little bit too tiny, but even this one will hover, cover a lot. But my pr personal preference is to go with a contrasting, a contrasting button. You could use a, yes, Elizabeth, you could use a yo-yo if you wanted to. Um, I also have these specialty buttons that can go in the middle and can hide them. Okay, so the my thread is still attached to the back. So I'm just going to attach that, attach the button with the same, same thread. I'm not even gonna, you know what, I've decided I don't, I prefer the larger button on this one just because of scale. So, and these buttons, I just went into my, my harvested button pile, you know, the ones that come off clothes and the extras that come with clothes. Um, I didn't go out and buy anything special. I did um, a couple of years ago buy these buttons. I bought them in a pack. Um, but these ones that were in this bat, this little bucket here, they just came from my button basket in my bedroom. <laughs> Nambella, that would be a beautiful idea. Lucinda, thank you so much for your donation. <laughs> You're going to make me blush. <laughs> Okay, 
So I'm actually gonna get a little bit more thread to put this one on. I think I missed saying that step. In fact, I miss, missed a number of steps. So I better, <laughs> I better just say I missed all those and go back, go back. So step number 11 is uh, sewing the button on. So let's just go here and I'm just going to grab a little bit more thread to put on the button. My old eyes, I've got my strong glasses on here. And a, if you don't know how to do a quilter's knot, let me just pull it here. You just grab your, your thread and then you spin it around your needle two or three times. I actually do it three and then you just pull it. And that will put a knot at the end of your, your thread. So just attaching that button. Uh, you don't have to be super, super um, crazy with the threads. I think going up and down twice um, or at the most three times, there's no structural integrity that you need to worry about here. Um, and that's that. And then you just tack it off at the back. Surfiness, thank you. Helen Santana, thank you very much, both of you. And just snip it off. And the last step, the last step, step number 12 is attaching a ribbon. So there's a number of different things you can use. You can use, um, I got this from Ikea. This is, uh, is it twine? I have a flax. I think this is hemp. Um, I mean, depending on the fabric you're using, you can use kitchen twine, excuse me, um, or a ribbon. What I use to attach on this one was actually, this is, uh, I bought some fabric a couple of weeks ago from Sew Sisters and they wrapped a bow on my bag and I just used that. My crazy with me with ribbons, I never throw anything away. And I think this one deserves a little bit more. And you just choose the length that you wanna go to. Could I use cardstock for this? I think cardstock would be too heavy for this, but I think you could definitely use some colored paper uh, that often comes in a heavier weight than just regular photocopy paper. Um, Lily's Nana, thank you very much for your donation. Um, but you could definitely use all different, you could use wrapping paper. I have a couple of really good I have a couple of reversible uh, wrapping papers that I picked up over the years and those have a nice heavy lift to them. Um, and they would do a good job on this. And that would be a fun um, craft to do with, with family and people of all ages. So I'm just putting another quilter's knot in there. I'm gonna hang it. Just deciding, I think I would prefer it to go like that. So when it comes up, it's gonna go like this. And I'm just doing a couple of stitches back and forth here on the back. And then I just put another knot in it. And there she is. What do you think? 
Could you put a button in the back too? Uh, definitely, you could put a button in the back. Uh, it just becomes a little bit, um, you just have to be matching them, right? So you're, you're coming through the back um, in the front and you're just getting your stitches back and forth. And then you would, if you're asking that question, I'm presuming you know how to bury your threads between buttons. So yes, you can definitely do that. And that's, and that is this one. Here we go. So I did several ones. Um, just before we go on, is there any questions about this one that you want me to go over any steps? Uh, thank you, Major. Majory and Marie, such nice thoughts. Thank you so much. <laughs> you really love the little one. The little one's pretty cute. The little one's pretty cute. Okay, so let me talk to you about some of the variations that you can do. Um, definitely, there's beads. We've talked about these little um specialized buttons that you can put in the middle. Uh, certainly you could do beadwork. You can see on something like this, um, adding just a little bit of bling. Uh, can you see there? Just adding a little bit of bling in uh, on either on the points. Um, let me just bring the camera back down here. So you could make patterns, you could do you can do them in a line. You could add them to just to the corners. Um, there's just so much, just a little bit of bling that can do stuff. Um, the buzzard girl, thank you so much. Um, but somebody already mentioned doing embroidery. You could use gold thread. Um, you can also embroider in the background here. Um, just bring up some, think of some greens, some colors, and you could even do some beadwork just hanging off the bottom if you wanted to as well. You can see that. You know, you could just get fancy. Janine Kosman, thank you so much. Uh, yes, yeah, somebody th definitely dry brushing. Why did we mark the top on the directional fabric? You mark the top on the directional fabric so that when you turned it around, you had the direction going up and down um, instead of sideways. Here's what. So like a directional fabric, you want you want the direction up and down. Marla Miller, thank you very much. Yeah. So have fun with all those extra craft items that you have in your, um, in your craft room. Uh, I mean, I'm sure if you could mark this out ahead of time, you could probably do some fun things with some fancy stitches too. Uh, some sewing machine stitches, you could possibly go all around the edges. Now with this one, this is a larger one and I thought I would try putting in a piece of batting on the inside just to give it a little bit more fluff. Uh, so when I got to this point, when I had pulled everything in on one, I had actually measured this size of this um, hexagon and I cut a piece of batting out of that and then attached it to the inside and then I did my folding all over top of it. And um, it just gives it a little bit more poof. You can also, <laughs> try and poof these things in to give a little bit of dimension if you want it to move your fabric that way. But this is um, this fabric isn't really suitable for that one because there's not enough starch in it and it's just very soft. Um, 
We were using our stiletto. You might see that there's a couple of points in here. I just saw one. So you can always go in with your stiletto. Uh oh, here it is right here. Afterwards and just tuck in anything that doesn't want to be tucked in at the first time. And then just use your finger to press it down. So I'd love to see all your ornaments. I hope that you, um, if you, uh, I'm going to put a post on Facebook and you can add your, your picture to that post. You can post them on my page. Um, if you're on Instagram, use the hashtag, uh, just get it done. J <laughs> J G I D Q Xmas ornament. So I can see them. Marilyn Nichols. Thank you very much. Kathy Eubanks. Thank you very much. Very appreciate all the donations. So here are the different sizes that I have done so far. So here's there. There. And here we go. I don't know. This is I this is kind of has a baby Yoda kind of feel. <laughs> It's just so darn cute. <laughs> and of course, this one. So. So we're at the eight minute, the one hour mark. Are there any questions that I can answer for anyone before we sign off here? Uh, I'm just so happy all of you showed up. Uh, just wonderful that everybody from all over the world, just so great to see a community here and everybody behaving so nicely. <laughs> I'm not sure if you noticed, but there's been some... Uh, some people have <laughs> been a little unkind lately. Dottie, thank you so much. Uh, let me see. I'm looking for questions. Do you have lots of homemade ornaments on my tree? Uh, I have kept all the ornaments that my children have made over the years. And actually, next year, I'm actually going to give them to them. They're old enough now that they'll have their own trees. Um, there are, and my father's family used to gather every year and for Christmas, and we would have a huge, uh, a family ornament was part of the, um, table setting and you brought that home. So we have lots of those homemade ornaments too. And I've got a couple of special ones that I've collected over year, the years that we personalized, but I can see this type of thing becoming a family gathering um, type of thing. I'm hoping to do this with my niece and my daughter and my other female relatives just as a uh, sisterhood type of thing just before Christmas too. Uh, how, how is my daughter? Uh, so she tested, her boyfriend tested positive for covid two Mondays ago and they self-isolated for two weeks outside of the city um, in a family farmhouse and she's back in the city now she tested positive her symptoms came on a couple of days later um, and she was never as bad as her boyfriend but they're still not right yet they're still there's they're not um they're not sick in bed, but they definitely still feel like they have something. His sense of taste has not come back yet. And, uh, and my daughter ne was never quite as bad as he was, but, um, you know, they still feel that there's something there. Darling Crosby, thank you very much. Joe Turner, Auntie Sash, thank you very much for your donations. And if if you have joined late and don't know, all the, the live chat, um, the super chat 
um, amounts are going to the North York General Foundation. Um, I'm making the whole amount is going to the charity. And that is where my eldest son received his chemotherapy treatment this year. So I thank you all for your donations. Um, yes, I've heard that the recovery is tough too. I have um, a friend who has a sister who had it four months ago and she still doesn't have her sense of taste back. So, uh, which is a little distressing to hear. Um, my son, my daughter's boyfriend is a lot younger, so I'm hoping that he bounces back a little faster, but very lucky that neither of them needed hospitalization. And uh, his brother and his sister also had it and they have also recovered. So good. Uh, <laughs> my son, the one that had lymphoma this year, uh, he is doing very well. Thank you very much for asking. He is back at work. Um, he's trying not to take on too much. And of course, everybody is isolated. So he's got to be careful. And uh, no, but he is good. Thank you for asking. Maureen, thank you very much. Would stitch and tear work instead of interfacing? I think um, stitch and tear could work. You know, you're just looking for something, I think, um, what do you call it? Solvi, Solvi could work as well. All you're looking for is, oh, um, something just to make it a little bit more rigid. Now, somebody said um, cardstock. And I, when I answered that question, I was thinking that you would use the whole thing in cardstock. But if you just made a card the size of the smaller, not the, the original size of the hexagon, but the size of this hexagon, um, and then put a hole in the middle where you could sew in and out, that probably would be enough to, um, to work too. But give it a try on the size, like this, this size without interfacing, I think you could probably get away with just a lot of starch. Katerina McGuire, thank you very much. Maureen, thank you very much. Can you donate after the, the stream? You can always donate directly to the North York General Foundation. Just go to their website. Um, that's all good. Thank you. Um, so this, you could just use a lot of starch. You don't necessarily need interfacing for. And I used a variety of different types of interfacing depending on what I had. I think the general rule is the larger you go, the more rigid you want it to be. Because this is just... This is large, so, um, and if you're using a soft, this is a fairly rigid um, uh, quilting cotton, but there's quilting cottons out there that are much softer. So you would have a difficulty this keeping its shape if, you, if your cotton was much softer. Beta, <laughs> oh, I am terrible. Kubeki. Vita Kubecki, thank you so much. And Christina Gould. Christina Dodd, sorry, my eyes. <laughs> my eyes, have I've been struggling with my eyes just recently. And of course, it's probably one of the worst things for a, uh, a quilter to lose their eyesight. But uh, it's just the, the dry eye uh, with all the, the fans coming on for heating uh, in my house, in the office, in the car. I find my eyes get dried out very quickly and I'm probably consuming a lot less water because it's just cold instead of hot. Um, so I've just got to really keep on keeping that way, but it really deteriorates my eyesight. So I apologize. Thank you, Deborah. Bless you in your, for a Merry Christmas too. What size is the little red one? So the little red one was started at four and a half inches and it finished So you measure the sides, so it measured it finished at two. So you that makes sense, right? It started at four. The the unfinished uh, starting size was four and a half inches. Um, so it finishes at a at two, half the size that you start with. So um, this is nine. <laughs> yeah. So this was this is a fat quarter. I used a, I, I, I squared up a fat quarter and I made this one. Yeah. 
Sue Dukerman and Amanda Berger. Thank you both very much. Jennifer D'Angelo, thank you very much. So, yeah, so. Barbara Blake, thank you. Susan D Dugan, thank you. Yes, I've been using eye drops too, Judy. Uh, <laughs> I have them everywhere. I have them in my car. I have them in my desk. I have them in my bedroom. I have them in the bathroom. I have them in my purse. I just have them everywhere. Um, and I just have to remind myself to blink more too, because there's nothing worse than uh, <laughs> a culture losing their eyesight. Tracy Lane, thank you very much. Kate Ashby, thank you very much. So glad to see you here. You always have such good questions. I appreciate your input for all the Q and A's. Yes, uh, Dottie McComber has asked me if I will let everybody know how much we raised and I will definitely let you know. So tomorrow, uh, tomorrow Brandy and I will get onto the blog, um, the steps, the instructions by step. And of course, refer back to this video for that, um, that tricky step of folding, folding these down and flipping them back because that's very hard to describe in instructions. And I'm looking forward to seeing all your ornaments. So please post them. Please show me what you do. Show me how you personalize them, how the fabric makes a difference and uh, just some fun that you've had along the way. Uh, what thread should you use? You can use any thread. Uh, I just use, I have some Aurifil here, but honestly, on some of these, I think I was using some thread that's older than I am. I pulled it out of uh, an old wooden spool. Uh, you don't need to worry about the size of the needle either. Just whatever works with the, the size of thread that you're using, because the thread is all going to be covered up by the button that you use. So um, there's going to be a little bit exposed in the back, but if you use the same color thread as your ornament, it's not going to stand out. And nobody, once this is on a tree, no one's going to no notice it. Um, uh, something else that you can do on the back, of course, is make a message on it. Um, if you're giving it to someone, just say the year, to Christmas 2020. Um, and I think this is actually going to be something that you could, this is, we've made this all out of holiday Christmas fabric, but uh, I think this is something that you could use for other holidays. Uh, do them in pastels, and I think it'd be good for Easter. Uh, put it in a blingy pink, and I think you could use it for Valentine's Day, and of course, uh, bring out the red and white, or the red, white, and blue, depending on what country you're in, uh, for either Canada Day or Fourth of July. And truly, I think you could do a couple of these in black, and put them up around our, or the Thanksgiving colors. Uh, I think it would look well there too. Sandy Hand, thank you very much. Lori McDonald, thank you very much. Um, Brandy, is there anything else I need to say? <laughs> um, Brandy has been, you've seen her in the notes, in the chat. She's been working very hard there, making sure that you, uh, are directed to the instructions and helping with some of your questions. And uh, I couldn't have done this live stream without her. So thank you very much, Brandy. I'm gonna put these up here. I'll, put, I'll post a couple of pictures of these on Instagram tomorrow. So if you need another look at them. And In my next newsletter, before I'll do one more newsletter before the end of the year, and I will refer to this the blog post with the instructions too. So um, I'm going to be taking the next week off. Uh, there'll be no video from me next week as uh, I just <laughs> when I need the break. <laughs> it's that time of year, and I just need the break. So I am wishing you all the best of the season to you and your family. Stay safe. I know it's a bummer that we have to all spend it by ourselves. 
uh, these holidays are about big family gatherings or gathering with friends. And it's just something that we can't do this year. So um, everyone stay safe. Um, I'm also going to have one more newsletter coming out before the end of the year. And I have, I'm going to have some holiday playlists for you. Um, I know we all try to take advantage of the downtime between Christmas and new year's to get some sewing in. So while you're sewing, uh, maybe you can listen to some of the Karen Quilt Circle interviews. I've interviewed some amazing women and a couple of guys and uh, just wonderful things to share. Uh, last week, uh, the interview was with Janine Van Gool of Uppercase Magazine. We've had um, Anita Zobins talking about thread and uh, just all sorts of great, great interviews. And I've got some great ones coming up in the new year. Uh, and my next one coming out over the, on the 28th, because I'm sure a lot of you are thinking of doing this, uh, cleaning up your 2020 and getting ready for 2021. I have um, Kim Sofer talking about destashing your fabrics. So uh, I hope you'll look out for that. And I can't say thank you enough for all your support this year. It's been a tough year and your wonderful comments and your support of my channel has just meant the world to me. In many days, some of those comments are <laughs> the thing that keeps me standing up. Uh, yes, thank you. There's been, yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, the humor, the kindness, the support, and of course, all the new people showing up and, and learning to enjoy the hobby of quilting. So uh, I guess it's time to say goodbye. So Merry Christmas. Take care. And if you have any questions, please just either send me an email or message me through Facebook or Instagram. So take care. Bye.